the same layout, I'll let you sit down. Amen. Good 22. Good to hear that guitar then, compared to what we've had this morning. Amen. <laughs> Thank God. Amen. All three verses, Brother Greg? Four, but we can do three if that's what you want. Well, uh, you said 222? 222, two, two, just uh, 22. There's power in the blood. I'm oh, sorry. I can go. Uh, amen. My bad. 22, guys. I'm sorry. No, you're not. Today that a fellow <coughs> died yesterday, 
Uh, he died on, he, he was born on that day, and he died on that day. I, that's, that's unusual, amen. But uh, thank God, I hope he was saved, amen. That's uh, the most important thing. Come on, come on up here, and we'll, we'll sing happy birthday to you. Little white church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What number is this? It's the number that uh, it's in the back of everybody's mind. Um, it's the happy birthday song. Um, in other words, we put in the, put the <coughs> candles on your cake plus one to grow on. Now we're not getting all that now. Would that call the, that now. <laughs> well, the fire department out to put it out? Huh? Yeah. Well, she bought. She bought two candles, and I was able to flip it around the other way. So oh, okay, amen. It it's all right. Quite nice. It took uh, almost eleven. It took eleven years off. So that should be right. all good. Let's sing to Greg. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Uh, we uh, we made uh, I asked the church this morning about uh, sunrise service and also about uh, uh, most of them had our uh, fellowship the church fellowship the Saturday night before Easter that'll be the, the same weekend so they decided at this time that we were going to have uh, just have our Easter get together on that Saturday night for fellowship where we could enjoy and the fellowship and uh, these ladies can have one year they don't have to get up and cook and and, uh, and, and uh, they can they can enjoy the that and just have a regular service that Sunday morning amen and uh, nothing wrong with that I, uh, you know amen uh, I uh, I remember the first uh, sunrise service that I had when I was a pastor and uh, I never thought about I thought everybody wants to come to the graveyard, and, uh, and uh, but I found out they didn't. <laughs> Amen. But uh, you know, it's a spe certainly a special time, and we have uh, Easter on the first, uh, you know, the first Sunday of April uh, every so many years uh, of the, uh, and uh, so uh, you just uh, remember us, remember who, what we're doing it for anyway. Amen. Amen. And who we're doing it for. Amen. Amen. Well, let's have one more song, Brother Greg, and I hope maybe you all have a special tonight, if you're up to it. How's your throat doing? It's all. Okay, no. it sounds clear. Just does mm -hmm. It sure does. Sounds clear. To give you any hope about when the track might get to come out? Not yet. I hadn't seen that doctor yet. Okay. We'll see the, at the end of tonight, we'll get to see her. Amen. We rescheduling the appointment on it, so... Well, pray pray for me. I've got to go to the urologist tomorrow, and uh, and so um, I appreciate what God's already done and uh, what He's going to do. And uh, Amen. Amen. Okay, what number are you want to use, brother? Two, two, three, two, twenty-three. <laughs> yeah, it is two, two, three. Uh, victory in Jesus. Yeah. We're going to, if it's all right, just change that last uh, stanza and angels sing it to angels say. I believe you're right there too, brother. I know angels never sing uh, that I know of. No, so we'll just say angels say. If you, if, when y'all get that part, just remember to say angels say, not angels sing, okay? Okay. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning Then I repented of my Oh, 
then you give it to somebody else and you can come back and get nothing. I had to type the thing up. And he had to type it all up, and then I found I found a couple hundred in my study the other night when I was going through it. And I, I know he was glad I found them. Amen. And uh, the devil, I, he hates this track. And I'm going to tell you why he hates it, because it tells you and teaches you how to pray to get answers. Amen. You realize it was a long time after I got saved before I realized how to pray to get an answer. It's getting dark out there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Ooh. What about y'all? Well, I guess I'm just getting old and feeble, I guess. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's y'all ready. To Anybody have a song besides Greg and Chastity? Cindy, I want you and Miss Dunn to get back together and start. They used to sing together. Used to sing. I'd like to hear that. Amen. Yeah, yeah. We used to have, they used to sing as part of the Grace Trio. One, two, three. And the only difference was their mama was in on it then. Amen. She's still singing. Took it up in person. Amen. <laughs> Still a smiling. I bet you uh, the tears haven't been wiped away, so I know she's still a crying too. Amen. 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 Okay, Mr. Greg, you do your thing. I'm going to try to do one that's it's not a new song, but it is new for me and Chastity. So y'all pray for us. Um, maybe we'll do it justice. A song that uh, a lady we used to go to church with wrote, wrote these songs, and uh, and you know who it is, uh, Lane Klein. So. Yeah, he's gone home to heaven now. Well, I didn't know that, but well, somebody told me she died. I, I may be wrong. Don't I, tell me. I don't know, but I just know this: that, uh, that when that she wrote these songs, she believed she could lose your salvation, but right. the songs were engrafted eternal life and and the doctrine of eternal life was so strong in it and what God was showing her and you'll see that and the name of this song is in the center of his hands. Amen. The hand that hung the stars as he named each one of them he scooped out the canyons and drove a river out of path. He measured out the sea and metered out the sand and down sheltered in the center.
He holds my tomorrow in the center of His hand. Amen. Yes, He holds my tomorrow. Oh, He holds my tomorrow in the center of His hand. that not have eternal life grafted all through the song? <coughs> well, I sound sure like you changed your thoughts on that. I sure am. Yeah. Hallelujah. John chapter 10. Amen, bro. John chapter 10. How many of you have to know 10 people <coughs> between now and next Sunday you can invite to church? 10 people. Come on. Five people? Five people. Only got three hands out of five people? Well, I never met a stranger I didn't know, so I can always invite people. Mm -hmm. Shame on you. You'll forget. How many of you are going to store box some groceries this week? Lord will. Or maybe you done went to the grocery store. So then people need the Lord. Amen. They sure do. John chapter 10. I really don't know. I, I said I was going to preach the last fact of the chapter tonight, but I, um, I'm going to have to go back on that. We're going to read from, start reading verse seven again tonight. And I didn't get halfway this morning. One thing about God, you cannot exhaust His Word. I can get to the end of me, but I've never got to the end of Him. Amen. I. Uh, I hope and pray there are some things that I want to, as a child of God, not just as a preacher, but as a child of God, I want to, I, if the Lord sees fit to take me before the rapture, um, I want to leave a good testimony behind. Mm -hmm. I want to leave a good uh, stack of wore out King James Bible behind. Amen. Um, I want to leave behind that I was a witness and a prayer warrior. Amen. I believe everywhere the Lord went while he walked in the flesh in this earth, he talked to people about their needs and loved them. Chapter 10 in John uh, is, of course, all of it uh, is my favorite, but... Uh, he deals in these verses primarily in what he is. He was there present with them. That was awesome. To, uh, if you had the privilege of, uh, of seeing him, I've never saw him with, with, with my natural eye. I'm going to. Amen. We all have pictures, and we, I've got one. We've got one in our home of, of what the, of the artist thought that the Lord looked like. Amen. And we've had that picture for a number of years. Uh, Bernie Murray gave him a haircut, amen, put a ear on it. But uh, what, a, what a blessing here. Let's begin reading with verse number 7 through verse 21. Then said Jesus. We can stop right there. Then said Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Unto them, again, burly, burly. Truly, truly, burly, burly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Yes, sir. All they that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. 
I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be what? Saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Plenty. Is there somebody outside? Okay. Nope. The thief cometh not, but for to <coughs> steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He don't want, only want you to have life. He wants you to have it more abundantly. Verse 11. Look here again. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep, for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. You can't be saved and not know it. And you can't be saved in Jesus not know it. Amen. There's no such thing as a secret disciple. Mm -hmm. Nope. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this folk. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down to myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. For, and many of them said, He hath the devil in his mouth. Why hear ye him? Others said, They're not the, the words of him that hath the devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Isn't that something? Amen. Father, I pray you would open our understanding. I don't know. There's a reason, I'm sure, Lord, and I don't though I don't know it. You've got me back right here in this uh, passage I started with this morning. And Lord, I, it's not my will I'm seeking after tonight, but it's your will. And Lord, I pray that you'd help me and help these to see that thy will done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The shepherd's work of our uh, our Lord was done in three aspects. As the good shepherd, he gives his life for the sheep. John 10, 11. And it is therefore the door by which if any man enter in, he shall be saved. This answers... Uh, to Psalm 22. He's the great shepherd. Not only the, she the good shepherd. But he's the great shepherd. Brought again from the dead. He not only laid his life down. He told Pilate. You don't take my life. I lay my life down. If I lay it down. I'll take it again. What did he do? Laid his life down. Three days later. After all the abuse and things they could give him. After the whipping he got, the cat of nine tails, uh, after the, his hands were, uh, 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 were nailed to the cross and his feet and his back raw against that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, dogwood tree, hmm. he's doing all that for you and for me. He was living up to what he said. I bought a lot of things, Tim, over the years that didn't live up what they said. And I bought this one thing. They said, guaranteed to lose weight. I must have found somebody's. <laughs> Amen. The advertising sometimes better than the programs on TV. Amen. 
But what Jesus advertised was absolutely the truth. He's not only the good shepherd, he's not only uh, the, uh, uh, the great shepherd, uh, brought again from the dead, Hebrews 13, 20, uh, to care for the uh, poor and make uh, perfect the sheep. We're not perfect yet, but one day we're going to be. You wait till you see that brand new body I'm getting. Brother Greg's getting. Amen. Amen. This is the answer to Psalm 23. Amen. He is the chief shepherd, not only the good shepherd, not only the great shepherd, but he's the chief shepherd. He's the only shepherd. Now there's a lot of a lot of men who have their job was a description. David had kept his father's sheep, so we could say he was a shepherd boy when he was. He learned a lot of lessons out there attending to the sheep. But he not only was a, was a shepherd boy, but he was willing to lay his life down for those few little sheep that his father. How do you know? Killed a bear. I don't know about you. If I step out of the back door and there's a bear rises up on his two hind legs, I'm going to sing that old song, Feet Don't Fail Me Now. I'm not going to stay and wrestle with it until I get something that can handle it. Amen. You wouldn't shoot a bear. If you got any business being my back door, you better get away. Amen. David had to kill the lion and the bear, and he didn't have a 30 off six. Amen. He had a sling. Can you see uh, going up against a bear and a lion with a sling? I can throw a rock pretty good, but I, I'd do some serious damage if I had a sling, probably. Tim would, too. Matter of fact, I remember when he, when him and his brother were, were small, you know, young men. They were teenagers. You made a sling out of something. I forget what it was. Did you ever hit anything with it? You remember making one? No. No? Okay, that's all right. Well, what we talked about this morning, I, uh, I used that, those points, verses 1 through 6 of chapter 10, as the illustration. Now, these verses tonight, 7 through 21, is the explanation. 7 and 10, the door. Christ... And you need to really let this sink into your heart and your mind. Christ is not a door. He is the door. That word the is a definite article. He's the only way that you can go to heaven. You and I live in a day of grace right now. The only way a man or a woman, boy or Girls reach the age of accountability can go to heaven is by Jesus Christ, the door. And as he is the door, and as such, uh, he leads the sheep in and out. Just to, back in chapter 9, there was a blind man that he had restored sight to. And his, they, they called him in uh, in, uh, and he really didn't know who Jesus was. He just knew. He said, I once was blind, but now I see. He come into the world, uh, and his parents said, you know, he's of age. He was born blind. We know that. We can attest to that. And how he sees, we don't know. Ask him. He didn't want to get in trouble with the Pharisees. Amen. If you'll do more, have more, or try to be more, there are going to be people talk about you and criticize you and run you down. I'm sorry. But remember who you're doing it for. And remember what he did for you. Amen. And the blind man in chapter 9 was cast out, excommunicated by the Pharisees and by the nation of Israel. Why? Because he trusted Christ. You would have thought they would have been excited about that. And, you know, the Pharisees were fair, you see, because they believed in, the, in the, de the angels and they believed in the resurrection. The Sadducees were sad, you see, because they didn't believe in either one. That may, may get, that'll make you very sad. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. 
My pastor gave me a, a parcel of wisdom as a young man. I'd had several preachers tell me, well, just drop around and maybe I'll use you while you're there. Mm -hmm. My pastor said, if they don't call you and book you, don't you go. You be in your place. Take care of your Sunday school class. Take care of whatever you're going to do for God. But if they'll book you, tell them, and tell them that. Tell them you just don't drop by. You're faithful to your church. Amen. And uh, we were praying for Greg and, and them this morning, weren't we, church? Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we wanted to see him be successful down there. And and the Pharisees, they wanted all. They want. They they had the rights. They had. Uh, they had the chief places in in the synagogue and the markets and at the, any parties they had. And and yet they were they were confused about this man. And they attributed it to the devil. And uh, and you know and I know the devil never opened eyes of the blind, amen. And uh, but 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 Christ took him in. Christ came looking for him and found him. Author Pink, uh, author of many books, and I've read behind Brother Pink a great deal in my lifetime, uh, points out that uh, there are really three doors spoken of in this chapter. And, and we must distinguish them if we are to get the full uh, explanation of what we're looking at tonight. The first door is the door into the sheepfold, verse 1. The sheepfold is not heaven, but the nation of Israel too. Christ came to Israel through the appointed uh, scriptural way, and the porter, John the Baptist, opened the door for him. Mm -hmm. He was the forerunner. That's how you can explain that. The door into the sheepfold, verse 1. The door of the sheep, verse 7. This is a door that, that leads people out of their present fold. In this case, Judaism or religion. Christ opens the way for multitudes to leave the old religious system and find a new life in him. Amen. It's in him. Only through him. Mm -hmm. Then not only the door into the sheep pole, the door of the sheep, but third, the door of salvation, verse 9, is in our text this evening. The sheep using this door go in and out. No, and that don't talk about being out of the will of God or in the will of God. They just have access to go. We, we gather to worship and we scatter to witness. We're going, what are we doing? We're going in, and we came in a little while ago, and we're going to go out here in a little bit. Then outside these doors is the is the field. Outside these doors uh, is where the uh, where we need to sow the seed that others could be saved by the way we live, by the way we walk, and by the way we win. Amen. Amen. You don't dig, you don't, you, you don't get, I love, I love good green beans and, and corn and, and I can't wait till we get some more garden fresh tomatoes, amen. Nothing like a tomato sandwich, uh, I with a little miracle whip on it. Gene likes goops on hers, amen. Amen. <laughs> I know you're against me there, but, uh, but uh, understand that Jesus is the only door. Yes, sir. The only door. We have four doors in here. One in, you can't see. It goes outside through the office. We have two at the front. And one of those usually is locked. And the other one opens to go out on the front floor out that door. And we have a door that goes uh, in and out here. It's one of the few churches I've ever preached in or pastored that m most of the people come in the side door. Amen. That, it's all right. I ain't got a problem with getting in the door. Amen. But remember, verse 1, uh, the door into the sheepfold. Verse 2, the door of the sheep. And, uh, and or verse, two, uh, you know, verse 2, verse or verse 7, excuse me. And then verse 9, the door of salvation. Now, verses 11 through 15 deal with the shepherd. There's nothing wrong with our shepherd. Everything's right about our shepherd. Amen. <laughs> the way he lived and the way he died. Yes. He paid a debt that you and I owe.
He didn't know that then. Why? Because he had never sinned. He had never lied. You know, Hollywood said he, uh, that one time they made up, a, uh, they were making a movie about Christ and said that he had had an illicit affair with Mary Magdalene. No. That's a lie. Yes, sir, it is. He was virgin born. <clears throat> now, what he gave to Mary Magdalene was the gospel, amen. Yes. Amen. And forgave her of her sins. Yes. If I would take all the sins of Lloyd Jones, everything I'd done wrong or against God since I was born. That was to say there wouldn't be room in here for you. And I was a pretty good boy. But I did sin against God. He didn't give up on me, and we shouldn't give up on others. I've heard people say, all my, well, I just give up on him. I'm glad he didn't give up on me. He's looking for me the day I got saved. Amen. <laughs> He, and I, I, I've gone to a lot of people's houses, but he come to me, amen. And uh, he, he, uh, he, he come to me. There's nowhere I can go now that he don't go with me. Uh, and, and he wants to, to be the, the, still be the light and the help and the door for anyone else that needs to come. There's nobody so sorry God can't save them. I saw him save a lot of uh, people that I, I deemed uh, not worthy, but he saved them anyway. Amen. There's a contrast here between the Pharisees the high, and, and really what the Lord was talking about here was the hirelings, the Pharisees. who had They had no concern for the sheep. They had no concern for Jesus Christ, the good shepherd. They flee and protect themselves. When sinners come and the enemies come, but Christ willingly gives up his life for the sheep, even the Jews and the Gentiles. You only can be in two groups, either you're a Jew or you're a Gentile. And uh, what did they do? They fled. They, were, uh, they should have been rejoicing in chapter 9 with this young man who had been blind all of his life, and now he saw. They didn't go down to the Charlotte Laser Clinic, amen. And he, and by the way, this is not the only time the Lord opened the eyes of the blind. Every time a person gets saved, he's opened the eyes of the blind. You may have physical eyesight, but when you get saved, he gives you the light, amen. amen. He is the light. The sheep use this door. Uh, and then uh, they, they get saved. They come to the good shepherd. Uh, and the, um, Christ as good shepherd gives his life on the cross, Psalm 22. As the great shepherd, he cares for the sheep in Psalm 23. And as the chief shepherd, he will come again in glory. He's coming back and he's going to take us Call us up. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, you and I, which are alive right now, will be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And see, Christ uh, will come again in glory for his sheep. That's Psalm 24. In that mural on the back wall of our church, it, it depicted Psalm 22, 23, and 24. I hate we lost it. I took some pictures of it uh, before they uh, covered it up. But uh, for years, that was our backdrop. Amen. Until Tommy uh, made these crosses here. In verse 18, by the way, 1 Peter chapter 5 is a good chapter to read. It will help you. All, all the word of God will help you. In verse 18, he speaks of both his death and and resurrection here in verse 18 and no man taketh it from me but I lay it down on myself I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again he'll never lay that life down again he died once for all once for all 
he die for those Arabs? Yes, he did. Did he die? Uh, did he? Did he die for that fellow down? And, and, and those two guys in Columbine, he died for them. Did he die for that young man, that, uh, nineteen down in Florida? He died. He died for them. The difference is our Savior got up again, and he's been up ever since. Amen. He came down, he laid down, he got up, he went up, and he's coming again. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a joy. I mean, this, this season is a joyous time. Uh, by the way, of this Easter season, uh, we worship the resurrection of the Lord. At one time, it was a pagan holiday. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Well, Christ when Christ gets up, it ought to mark something. Amen. There ought to be difference. There ought to be a difference in you and me. And the the longer we're saved, the more we ought to be like Him. Amen. Anyway, now the flock. That's verses sixteen through twenty one. The other sheep. There's more more churches in Grace Baptist Church. There's more churches uh, that people are being saved at that are not Baptist churches. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You say, well, well I, I sort of liked it when they said, but, you know, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go first class. Of course, I was exposed to this. And I was brought up in this. But I believe there's a lot of people saved in uh, different, uh, they, got, they got saved, not because of their faith. Uh, they got saved because of what Christ did on the cross. Now, I think you ought to find a good Bible believing, Bible teaching church. When you get saved, you get involved in it and grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And I will tell you, you're going to hear the truth at Grace Baptist Church, uh, and uh, I hope it never changes if death does take me. So that word grace in itself means a lot to me, not just the name of the church, but the grace of God, God's riches at Christ's expense. Now, the, the, the flock, one day we're going to be all together uh, in heaven. You know, you realize how many people have been saved since Christ died on the cross, just, that, just right then. The other people were looking to the cross. We've looked since the cross. Amen. Are you getting that? Yeah. They look to the cross. We've looked since the cross. That's right. Seven o'clock in the morning right now, almost seven o'clock, over in Jerusalem. There are 12 hours difference between here and there. And and the Orthodox black hats, are, they'll be at the wailing wall, and they have since daylight, praying, even come Messiah. Oh, come Messiah. Messiah, come. But they, they uh, he's already come. Mm -hmm. But he's coming again. He's coming the next time. He won't touch down uh, on earth, but he's coming in the air to gather us as his bride to take us uh, to the Bema seat and the marriage supper of the Lamb. But that marriage supper, uh, we're going to come back and rule and reign with him, and he's going to uh, reign off the throne of uh, David out of Jerusalem. There'll be a period of time there they can they can either see and accept or reject Christ. It's not, and we're not talking about grace now. We're living the hour of grace where we can look and live. Amen. But he, he died from all. And the fold, uh, there's many people in other folds that are saved because they trusted the shepherd. They came to the light. The other sheep are the Gentiles. That's us. He came to his own. His own received him not. So he turned to the, to the Gentile bride. Rahab was a harlot. But she was put in the bloodline of Christ. Now, as a rule, the mother gives the flesh, the father gives the blood. 
He was conceived without any sin. He knew no sin, never spoke any sin, never thought any sin or any sinful thing. <coughs> and yet he did all that for you and me, that we could have an opportunity to be saved by grace. Amen. That we could be part of that fold. Now, he's not going to make anybody go into sheepfold. He's not going to make anybody do anything. He may make us wish we had it done. Amen. We must bring them. We must tell them. I'm sure Greg's got other things to do on Saturday afternoon rather than going to the nursing home. But I'll tell you what, I really appreciate your dedication to the other. God understands when we can't when we're sick. He knows when we say we're sick and we're not, too. Remember, he said, Well, I can't go to the cross today. I I got the flu. Now, if you're contagious, I think you'll stay home. Well, I don't want it. But I'll get it if you bring it, amen. <coughs> There's many others, though. We've got to remember, we can't look down on people because they're not <coughs> running with the same crowd we run with. I'm going to tell you something you're not going to... I believe King James is the inerrant, infallible Word of God, but there's others that use something else. Now, that's their choice. He was the Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us, what John the Apostle said in chapter 1. If there's anything he's known by, by the word of God. If you want to hide something in your heart about Christ, hide the word of God in there. And he's, his sheep know his voice. Philip Keller said he was amazed when he saw many shepherds bring their sheep and put them in a sheepfold and the hireling set an opening to keep them inside. And then when the shepherds came back, whenever they came back from town or paying the bills or a night's rest or whatever, they would each make a certain sound and only those sheep would come out. And sheep's one of the dumbest animals God ever made. wonder why he likened us to the sheep. Amen. He told us the truth and we don't apply it. The other sheep are we that are Gentiles who were not of the Jewish fold. And now we're going back trying to win the Jews to Christ and the Gentiles too. And we do that through his voice. His word. How they know you've got, uh, how, how, he, he only makes one, there's only one way to be saved. There's only one way. One way and that's Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Acts 10, uh, where, where we see this happening at, when Peter goes to the Gentiles, and they, and they are uh, are saved. Verse 16 should, should read, and there shall be one flock, the true church, amen. And our shepherd, Christ, is the head of that church. He's not a part of it, he's head of it, amen. The church is made up of Jews and Gentiles, and there's one way and no other way in. There's one flock and no other flock. Uh, and one one way you get in through Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4 talks about our need for a spiritual life. Christ is the good shepherd who, who has already died for his sheep and got up the third day and was, was seen of men over 40 days, ascended back off the Mount of Ascension there with over 500 witnessing his going away. And that angel said this same Jesus you saw go away shall doubtless come again. And that's what we're looking for. We call it the rapture. Really, is that word rapture is not in your King James Bible. <coughs> but if it was broke down, it would say the catching away. Amen. Christ is the good shepherd who dies for his sheep. In the Old Testament, the sheep died for the shepherd. He calls through his word, and those who believe step through the door out of religion, out of the religious folds of life into the uh, true flock of Christ, the church. Amen. That's why you get baptized after you're saved. 
You don't get baptized before you're saved. You get baptized after you're saved. Why? It's showing the world that you, you've died to the old life and been raised anew in Christ. And over the years, I've baptized a lot of people again. And they, they didn't feel, feel like some of them had made confessions of faith later. And, and But uh, let, me, let me just get to this part. Look with me for just a moment or two, and I will, uh, I, what Greg hit on this while ago, and I want to read this again. Verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. I made it personal, didn't it? I know them. And they follow me. And I give unto them. What's them, that them words there? Eternal life. I give unto them eternal life. I guarantee you there's somebody in the auditorium tonight that has somebody that believes that you can lose your salvation. You can't lose eternal life. What did I have to do to get, get eternal life? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior. And I will give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And the Jews took up stones to stone him at that saying. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone? The Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy and and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, It is not written in, is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent unto the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, through though you believe not me, believe the works that uh, ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I, I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. Even while he was on the earth as the Son of God, a lot of people didn't believe him. Can the devil uh, blind the mind of people to not believe? Sure he can. He did everything he could to get me not to, uh, to get saved. You know, when I when I got saved, he kept telling me I wasn't saved. He kept telling me that over and over and over and over again. They have eternal life and are secure, verse 28 and 29. The wonderful security true believers have in Christ to know that we're saved from the penalty of sin, uh, and one day we're going to be delivered from the presence of sin. Hallelujah. We have eternal life, not just life for a long time, uh, as we don't sin. We are in Christ's hands and in the Father's hand, a double assurance of eternal preservation of, of his sheep. Uh, we are the Father's gift to the Son, and the Father will not take back a gift. Sheep are a perfect picture of the Christian. Sheep are clean animals in the Bible, and Christians have been cleansed from their sins. Sheep walk together, and, and so do true believers. Sheep are harmless, and Christians should be harmless. Sheep are given to uh, wandering, and so are we. Sheep need the shepherd for uh, protection, for guidance, for food, and we need Christ for spiritual protection, daily guidance, spiritual food, and uh, to renew us day by day. Sheep are useful and, uh, and productive. So are true Christians. Finally, sheep were, were used for sacrifices and Christians are willing to yield himself for Christ. These Jews prove their unbelief by trying to kill Christ. And we're killing them every day because we're not living our testimony. 
what he's done for us. I give unto them. He don't ever take any back. Eternal life. He refuted them from the Old Testament by quoting Psalm 82, 6. If Jeremiah called earthly judge, uh, judged uh, gods, then surely he, he called himself the son of God. Careful never to put himself in unnecessary danger, Christ leaves the scene and many resort to him and put their faith in him. They stepped out by faith through the door, Jesus, out of the Jewish uh, religious fold and into the liberty and eternal life Jesus alone can give. And that's what he's given you and me, eternal life. Now, because we trusted the Lord to save us, and I hope you're saved, He lets us still make choices about our service. He, uh, he wants us to make the right choices based on the word of God. But if the devil can, you know, he can't stop you from being saved. He'll, he'll try to do everything he can uh, to keep you not from trusting the Lord. And after you get saved, he'll try to keep you from serving the Lord. Amen. But when you, when you get to singing that old song, I Am Determined. Amen. To serve the Lord. He's done it all for me. Miss Dare, if you or I or Miss Jean or anybody else in here tonight that have been the only one that Christ <laughs> died for, he would have still died for you. Amen. By his stripes, we're healed. Miss Cindy, we're going to see the the holes in his hand mm. and feet are still there as evidence of what he did. Mm -hmm. He never told the first lie. He never set out to be a scholar, but everywhere he gathered, he was telling them God, God the Father, and what God was going to do. Amen. What a saint. Amen. Always give it. I don't see any place he took anything by force. He said foxes have holes. He said the birds have nests, but the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. He was God's son. Hung up his robes of righteousness, came down the Milky Way, lay down the manger. Lowliest place to be born. Wrapped in probably the rags that they wiped the sweat off an animal's head. I don't know if she had a pen wash set up to bring with her. I don't know if she sent Mary sense that she was going to have a child. They were going, they were going what was demanded by those in authority to pay their taxes. Give an account. Hmm. I don't know if she realized that she was going to have that child. It wasn't an accident they ended up in Bethlehem of Judea. I, I sort of believe it, uh, where they, the Lord himself was born, may have been like uh, the side of a mountain where they kept animals and all. So it could have been a barn, it could be, it doesn't say. No word in scripture that I found. You found any word, Greg? Hmm. No room for them at the end. There wasn't no room for them at the end. Why all the people were coming to do what the law demanded. But I'm glad he went past the law. He taught us about grace. One day I'm going to see him, Miss Cindy. I, I see him now in the Word of God and through thoughts and impressions that he gives me. One day I'm going to see him. One day I'll have access, Chastity, to go see him and talk to him personally. Amen. Amen. <coughs> We're going to see God the Father. He's going to come to that, to that new Jerusalem. Amen. What a, what a joy to see him. I want, to, I want to finish well. Didn't start out well, but I sure would like to finish well. What about you tonight? 
There was a couple finished last week. Brother Robert Settles. I didn't even know he'd been sick. Went home to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I know Brother McKinney had had some heart trouble in the past, but he died last Sunday. He went home to be with the Lord. Brother Bill McKinney. Good man. I'd like to cheat the undertaker. Well, I'm not really cheating, just not using anything I've already pre-bought, amen. He can have it. But wouldn't it be wonderful to rise to meet the Lord in the air? Mm -hmm. Somewhere between here and there, the gravity, oh, excuse me, is going to lose its hold. We're going to be changed from the corruptible to the incorruptible. From the mortal to the immortal. I've sat beside a lot of beds. I've, I've prayed with a lot of people that have been sick and later died. And those that were saved, I've never heard them say, I regret I was a child of God. Never have I heard that. What about you? Have you heard that? Are you ready? Well, like we used to play little game when we were kids called Ready or Not, Here I Come. Mm -hmm. I kicked a can or Red Rover or one of those kids' games. He's going to come in a day and an hour. But they're not looking for his return. One day the father's going to say, get your bride. And by the way, it won't take you just blink of an eye to get here. And we're going to go meet him. Say, well, there's a lot of things I want to get done before he comes. You need to be busy right now, then. Amen. You need to be doing something right now. Amen. Amen. You know, I'd like to leave the devil a whole lot of debt if I could. But he wouldn't pay it anyway, probably. What about you? We, uh, this song right here means a lot to me. How great thou art. Amen. The chorus then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. We talk about Christ and honoring him and thanking him for all he's done. So, you know, I want to thank the Father for allowing his son to die for us. Only Vestal Goodman could sing that song. I mean, I, I, first time, time I ever really recognized it was when Vestal Goodman sung it. Mm -hmm. And also, God walks the dark hills with me. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed for just a minute tonight. And let me let me ask you this question: two questions tonight, and I'll be done. Are you saved tonight? Do you know it? And if you're not, why aren't you? The second question is, are you satisfied with what you've done for Christ since you got saved? Has he saved you? Since you can be, if you'll let him lead you. Lord, this is in your hands tonight. Those hands that the nails tore the flesh. That side was pierced with a spear to, I believe it possibly pierced the heart. Blood and water flew out. You planted that crown of thorns on, it, on your head, Lord, and they dug deep into your scalp. They beat you with a cat of nine tails. They made fun of you. They stripped you naked and laughed at you. Put an old robe of the king on. And you were truly the son of a king. You weren't the king. 
game to change you on this. Lord, I pray right now for Grace Baptist Church. I plead God for the Holy Spirit of God to work in us and through us and all of us. Lord, there are a few raised their hands today, and I want to challenge them to invite at least five people to church to come down Sunday. Or Wednesday night. They can invite five on Wednesday night, I'm sure. <coughs> saved or lost. We want to see people saved, Lord. So we, we plead the blood on the, the buildings and the property. I know it's a place to worship. I know what's important to you is not these buildings. It's you in us. You are our door. You are our way. You are our truth. You are our light. No man can come to the Father except by you. Lord, I pray that we would represent you well this week. There's people at the drugstore, down at the grocery market, and people coming in and out, Walmart. We've got a lot of opportunities, Lord, to load up these tracks and take them. Lord, uh, we've got our track on the throne lights teach us how to pray and how to pray for others' salvation and how to ask you to save people. And I pray that we'd be usable vessels. Thank you now for what you have done. Thank you for what you're going to do. And Lord, we'll, we'll carefully give you the praise, the honor, and glory. Now, Lord, if there's one here that needs some help or needs somebody to be with them or help pray with them, I'll be glad to stay behind and do just that. Have your way in our life. Have your way in this church. Have your way in us sheep here, Lord, as we leave here today uh, to be a representative of you to our brothers and sisters, to our mothers and dads, our family. Lord, there's some already gone ahead of us. Lord, they can't start it off until we all get there. Same boat in Christ. Help us now. Go with us and guide us. Be with the sick, the afflicted, and the shut in. Maybe some here tonight sick. Lord, you know all about it. Now have your way. God will give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.